In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the construct Photoshop action. So the way that the action works is you open up your photo, you simply brush over your photo with a color and just play the action. And here's the effect that the action creates. So as you can see what the action does, it turns the whole photo into the sketch effect and the area that you brush will be turned into the color sketch. And also the results that you get are fully layered, so there is a lot of options for customizing the result that you get. Alright, so let me just close these two windows now. So when you open up your photo, before you use the action, there are just a few things that you should check just to make sure that the action will run without any errors. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is a background layer, so it should be called background and here this little lock icon. So if you have something like this or anything else, just go to layer, new and choose a background from layer. Then click on this menu icon over here, choose panel options and just make sure that this option here, the add copy, the copy layers and groups is checked. Then go to image mode and make sure your photo is in the RGB color mode edit bit channel. And you can also check the image size from here. So for best results, you use the images that are around from 20 to 40, 100 pixels wider height. Okay. Now to load the action, just go to window, actions. Click on the menu icon over here, load actions. And now just choose the action from a folder according to your Photoshop version. You can just double click the actions file and the action appears here in your actions panel. Now you can just select the pattern stand tool from here, click on this little uh, arrow icon, click on the gear icon, load patterns, and just select the uh, pattern file that came with all. You can just double click on it and to load the pattern that came with allowed. Now what you need to do is to just go to layer, new layer, to create a new layer, name it brush. And this is a very important step, so you need to type the brush exactly like this because otherwise the action won't work, which is okay. And now you can just hit B on your keyboard to select the brush tool and pick a salt brush. You can use square brackets on your keyboard to quickly change the size of the brush and just choose any color here, color does not matter. And simply brush over the areas that you wish to be turned into the color sketch, right? And I'm just going to open my PSD file because I've already done the brushing before. Here it is. Alright, so it's important that you brush or your photo while this brush layer is selected so you have this color fill on this layer, right? And after you finish brushing, all you need to do is just select the action and click play. So I'm going to fasten the video here and I'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished and then I'm going to go throughout all the layers to show you how each layer works, how it affects the design and how can you customize it. Alright, so the action is just finished, so I'm just going to close the actions panel and then I'm going to expand a little bit this layers panel. Right, so the first thing that you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just close down all these folders. So how can you quickly do that? You just hold Control and Double button for PC or Command Option for Mac. And while this folder is selected, just click on this little arrow here. And that we are going to close down all the folders. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide all the layers and then I'm going to start turning them on uh, one by one because that will better understand how each layer works and how it affects the design and how can you customize it. Right, so just going to hide all the layers. So uh, this is the uh, original photo layer and the first layer I'm going to turn on is the background color layer. So what you can do is double click on this color box here and you can easily change uh, the background color. And the next layer that I'm going to turn on is the main sketch. Alright, so this folder uh, is going to uh, reveal most of the details uh, of your photo. Alright, so here we got it, when you open the folder, here we got uh, two layers. Alright, so what you can do is you can just uh, change the opacity of any of those two layers to get a different result. Alright, so how you change the opacity is you can just click on the word opacity and drag it aside, just like this, or you can simply click on this arrow here and then move this slider around. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the opacity of this layer a little bit, All right? just like this. And what you can also do is, as you can see, both of these layers have the layer mask. So what you can do is select the layer mask of any of those two layers and choose the brush tool. Uh, pick a soft brush, set program color to black and just brush over the areas where you wish to remove this specific layer. Right? You can brush the layer mask of this. And on the same way, uh, we can do the same thing to the uh, other layers we're going to customize later. All right. So what you can also do is, as you can see, also each of these folders has their uh, own layer mask. So if you brush into this layer mask, you're going to remove 
all the layers inside the folder, right? As you can see. Right, so the next sketch folder we got here is the row sketch, right? So just gonna turn it on. And when, I, uh, when you open the folder, you see it's also layered. So I'm just gonna hide the main sketch uh, folder for now. And as you can see, this is just a row sketch. Every next layer inside the folder is going to be a more precise sketch. It's going to reveal more detail than the previous. All right, so what you can do is you can just change the opacity of any of those layers or use these layer mask to remove some of these layers in specific areas. And other, what you can also do is you can just lower the opacity of the whole folder here, right? and I'm just gonna leave it default and the next sketch folder we got here is the perspective sketch so just gonna turn it on all right and it's also layered so I can just hide these two layers for now all right as you can see uh, each of these layers creates a different uh, different sketch and um, here we got the perspective sketch additional lines layer so if you turn it down you're just going to add more lines to the design right you can change its opacity here what you can also do is you can move any of those layers so you can just select the layer and using the move tool you can just move it around right so what I'm going to do is just going to increase the opacity a little bit of the complete folder right just like this and the next folder we got here is the shading folder All right so this folder is going to reveal um, it's going to pop up uh, uh, details uh, so it's also layered All right so what I'm gonna do is just gonna increase the opacity a little bit of this layer. All right. And the next folder we got here is the hatch lines. So just gonna turn it on. And I'm just gonna hide all these layers. So the first layer we got here are these white lines. And as you can see, this layer has a layer mask. So if you just alt click, alt or option click on this layer mask. Wherever you have the white color, this layer is visible, and wherever you have a black color, this layer is not visible, all right? So this layer is visible all over these white areas, or actually the highlights of the photo. And this next layer here, these are the black lines, and it's uh, visible over the shadows of the photo, all right? So what I'm going to do is just gonna use the uh, controller command but to select both layers at the same time just gonna increase the opacity a little bit of both layers just like this right so the next layer we got here is going to remove the shadows a little bit as you can see it's going to remove the shading and just gonna leave it default and the next layer we got here just some additional hatch lines, right? So just gonna drop the opacity a little bit of this layer and a little bit of this one too, right? And here we got a color sketch. And one more important thing uh, I want to mention is that this layer here also affects the color sketch, right? So if I increase the opacity, as you can see, it's going to remove uh, completely uh, the shading and so the colors uh, sketch will not be visible that area as well All right so here we got a color sketch and here we got two layers uh, inside a folder All right so this layer more uh, colorizing the edges of the area that you have brushed and this one is going to colorize the complete area uh, that you have brushed. So what you can do is double click on this layer and what you can do here is to change this range, right? This is the range of the highlights of the underlying layer that this layer is going to blend with, all right? So 
so I'm just gonna set it like this and here when you just just alt option click uh, display this slider you're just uh, choosing the range of the highlights that will be removed from this layer Right, I'm just gonna set it like this. So you're gonna choose OK, and what we got here is the colored pencil to vibrance layer. So this layer is going to lower the vibrance a little bit of this layer. So what you can do is just double click here, and you can lower or increase the vibrance if you like. I'm gonna set it like this. All right. And the next folder we got here is the overlay textures. Just gonna turn it on. And when you open the folder, you'll see that you got a three different textures here. And what you can do is you can just select any of those textures and change their opacities, how, see how they affect the design, All right? Or you can just change the opacity of the complete folder, okay? So the next uh, layer we got is the photo tint. So you can use this layer to colorize the design. What you need to do is just double click on this layer thumbnail. And you can here choose the density and you can choose the filter here that you want to use. All right, so I'm going to use this one here and I'm just going to colorize it a little bit, just like this. Okay, so the next layer we got here is the overall contrast. So how you adjust the contrast is you just change the opacity. Okay. I'm gonna set it like this. And here we got the overall vibrance and saturation layer. So when you double click here, we can adjust the vibrance and saturation of the complete design. Which is gonna boost the saturation a little bit. Okay, and here we got the overall brightness layer. So when you double click on this layer thumbnail, you can adjust the brightness of your photo. So you got a five sliders here, and this slider is boosting the shadows. This one is boosting the highlights. This one is affecting the mid tones, and this one here is uh, going to fade the shadows. This one here is going to fade the highlights. Right. So you can use these five sliders to adjust the brightness as you like. I'm just going to leave it default. And here we got the overall sharpening layer. So if you didn't make any changes to design, you can now just uh, adjust the sharpening by changing the opacity. But if you, for example, remove some layer, uh, hide some layer, remove it or some area, or make any other changes to the design, you need to create this layer again. Because uh, if I move this layer around, you see these lines. These are the edges of the design. So if you have made some changes and this layer needs to be updated as well. All right, so I'm just gonna delete this layer and press Control, Alt, Shift, and D, or Command, Option, Shift, and D to make a screenshot. All right, then press Control, Command, Shift, U to desaturate this layer, go to Filter, Other, High Pass, and just set Radius to 2 pixels, and change the blending mode of this layer to Overlay. All right, and now what you can do is you can just change the opacity to adjust the amount of sharpening. All right, so that's it. So let's just quickly check the before and after. So this is the before effect, and this is the after effect. All right, so I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page. Thanks for watching.